The United States consumes more than 7 billion barrels of oil annually, half of which we import from Africa and the Middle East. The most economical way to transport oil over such long distances is in large quantities, requiring the use of massive supertankers. However, many US ports in the Gulf of Mexico and along the Atlantic coast are not deep enough, nor have entrances wide enough, to accommodate such large vessels. In addition, most US refineries cannot accommodate a supertanker's entire cargo at one time due to transfer and storage limitations. To resolve these issues, oil companies employ an offshore ship-to-ship -ship procedure where the supertanker transfers its cargo into smaller service ships which then transport the cargo to port. This process is called lightering. Lightering occurs in specially designated areas about 60 miles offshore, where water depth is sufficient for both ships and where contact with other vessels is minimized. A lightering support vessel delivers the specialized equipment and personnel needed to conduct the operation to the lightering area where it will rendezvous with the service ship. Upon arrival, the mooring master, a highly qualified mariner whose job is to oversee the entire operation, transfers to the service ship by way of a crane and personnel basket. Next, the specially designed cargo transfer hoses are lifted onto the deck of the service ship. The support vessel then deploys several large rubber fenders that will prevent direct contact between the two tankers when they come together. With all of the equipment in place, the next phase of the lightering operation can begin. To lend assistance during the remainder of the transfer process, the support vessel will maintain a watchful position nearby. On the bridge of the service ship, the mooring master contacts the captain of the supertanker to coordinate the plan of operation. Zero, two, eight. Degrees 5 is 0 minutes, a longitude 09429, uh, You can check it out and f uh, let me know if you're happy with this position cap, over. With final arrangements made, the mooring master and the service ship's captain closely monitor the next crucial stage of the procedure. Under their direction, the pilot and helmsman slowly maneuver the service vessel closer to the larger ship while both are still underway. The lightering ship continues alongside the supertanker until they achieve a matching course and speed. 420, 420. Slow When the two vessels come together, they are nearly parallel, so that all four fenders share the load at the time of contact. Still underway, the two tankers are secured to each other using mooring lines to minimize independent movement of either vessel for the duration of the cargo transfer process. With the two ships safely attached to each other, 
crew members from each vessel connect their respective ends of the 12 inch 90 foot transfer hoses. Pumping commences at a slow rate, but when flow has been established and no problems are indicated, the pressure is increased. In state-of-the-art control rooms, the ship's chief officer maintains a close watch on the fluid levels in the cargo and ballast tanks. The entire transfer operation is closely monitored on each vessel. Both of the ships keep a bridge watch to ensure that safe navigation is carried out or, if anchored, that a safe position is maintained. Twelve to fifteen hours later, the transfer process is finished. With the cargo transfer completed, the hoses are disconnected, drained and sealed to ensure that no oil is accidentally released to the environment. Two stern lines on the mothership. We'll be first. On the bridge, the masters plan their ship separation as carefully as they had their connection. The outboard will be third, and then the back spring here will be the very last. This process is less time consuming, but equally complex. Once the vessels are safely separated, the super tanker departs on her long journey across the ocean to load another cargo. The support vessel returns to the service ship to retrieve the lighting equipment and personnel. The massive fenders are reloaded onto its deck and firmly secured for the trip to shore. Now, fully laden with oil, the service ship makes its way to port to discharge its valuable cargo and the entire lightering operation is completed.